Billy Dean Anderson, if that was his real name, grew up here in Fentress County along the Kentucky border. At least that's what everyone in Pall Mall said, who claims he had been a fixture on the community as long as anyone could remember. He went as a child to the Rotten Fork Elementary, which was located in this flat plain right here. And like many children his age in the Great Depression in Appalachia, he became obsessed with figures like Billy the Kid and Jesse James because they stood up against corrupt law enforcement. They weren't perfect heroes, but the only way to make real money outside of dying in a coal mine in this part of the country was to make moonshine. It was easy, it was quick, and he saw his classmates left and right get their parents dragged in for moonshine production. And because of this, he was drawing, rather than learning, figures like outlaws and desperados in his notebook. Billy Dean Anderson was more of a mystery than a man. In fact, the FBI reported on his wanted poster that birth records don't reflect he was from Fentress County. And because he didn't have the brightest childhood in school, he started learning the Bible front to back, in and out, and before he knew it, he was an assistant pastor at this very church. Every time I talk with Appalachians about religion, they all say the same thing. They're very forgiving, and even the most pious, God-fearing preachers and reverends have a habit of dipping into the bottle. They'll take a swig before a sermon to help them deliver God's message. And for the most part, people are very forgiving because everybody has their vices. And I think that that is what makes Billy Dean Anderson's story so appealing. He was an everyday man. He was somebody who was from the local community who grew up in the Great Depression, and every now and then he would have a swig before church, but then he would have a swig after, and then he would have two swigs before and after, and then he started hanging out with a tough crowd, and people could see that it was a constant pull and push, a inner dialogue that he was trying to conquer, and sadly, he wasn't able to. In June of 1959, just off of Highway 127 here in Fentress County, Billy Dean Anderson and two of his friends were drinking a little bit, and their hobby when they drank was to go down to the river and shoot off some pistols. However, today they wanted to go to the drive-in movie theater, which was just off the main road. And they decided to come up, and although they didn't have any money, they thought, well, we could just kind of rough up and talk tough to the guy who sells the tickets and say, we want a free box of popcorn. And for some reason, Billy Dean Anderson decides to pull out his 38. And he says, I demand a box of popcorn. And the kid is shaking and he hands over a box of popcorn. And Billy Dean says, give me all your money. And the kid gives him $17. Well, for no reason, he decided to cock his revolver and shoot two inches away from the kid's head. And uh, the three men loaded up in their cars and drove 10 minutes back into town, into Pall Mall where they lived. And from there, they got into a standoff at the same church that Billy Dean preached at. The name of the theater is, near as I can tell, is the Twilight Drive-In, and the address listed online for it was 1270 North York Highway, Jamestown, Tennessee, just a short ways east of his hometown. With $17 in his pocket and a newfound sense of clarity that came with nearly killing a man, Billy Dean Anderson and his two friends left westward along Highway 127 a couple miles until Billy Dean Anderson pulled in behind the only place he felt would take him, the Wolf River Methodist Church, where he had served for a number of years as a sort of assistant pastor. And uh, immediately the two friends he was with were begging to leave. The police surrounded the place and lit up the stained glass windows, but Billy Dean Anderson held out until 10 a.m. when all three were apprehended, and because he was a first-time offender, he was only sentenced to four months. And I'm just going to venture to guess that the main reason that police showed up here so quickly is because Billy Dean Anderson lived along Highway 127, the same highway that the drive-in theater was located at. And because he was the assistant preacher here, Everybody in town probably would have known his name, and even if the guy over at the drive-in theater didn't know his name, he certainly had seen him around. And as soon as word got around, they figured he would probably head right over here. And their car pulled in behind here. It's also interesting to look around and see some of the sights, because they say that Billy Dean would, like many pastors, maybe have a nip of whiskey before or after a service. And that's what started it. So police immediately came here and probably saw the car parked right where I'm standing. And at certain points, he probably hung out under this tree with his friends 
at this old concrete table having a couple sips of liquor. In any case, he was released very quickly from jail and went on to a unfortunate life of crime. For a while, Billy Dean Anderson truly made his best effort to become a model citizen. He worked as a repairman, a tree surgeon, and as a farmhand, and it was at that last job that he found himself in Bowling Green, Kentucky, not too far away from a bank that looked very easy to rob. And so one evening, he walks into the lobby with a rifle and demands all the money in the registers. But much like the incident back in 1959 at the drive-in theater, he says the money just isn't enough. So he demands the 14 people in the lobby and the five employees go and open up the vault, get inside, empty all the money they can fit inside of a bag, and he makes off with that, locking them in the vault. Immediately, he hightails it from Bowling Green back to Fentress County, and by that night, he's picked up a friend and supposedly is driving erratically on a local dirt road. That is when the highway patrol sees him and goes to pull him over, and a shootout ensues that would result in a sentence of 10 years in prison. Now, there's a couple of minor details that seem interesting in this shootout that are worth mentioning. First and foremost, supposedly the Tennessee cops had no idea that Billy Dean Anderson was on the run from a bank robbery, and they see him going down this dirt road. Well, he just so happened to live on that dirt road. It was Highway 127, and he was probably pulling into his mom's house. I think that they had probably been tipped off there was a robbery because Billy Dean Anderson left a bit of violence everywhere he went, and they just phoned up Ventress County's police who told the highway patrol, and they were waiting on the road for him to go and visit his mom, which would echo his death in 1979. And the actual details of the shootout, too, are a little bit unusual. Now, as I said, the highway patrol pulled up alongside him, and he actually calmly drove to the side of the road, and at least the highway patrol says he opened his door and fired four shots. One of them hit a patrolman in the shoulder. Another hit the car square in the hood. A third one narrowly missed the second officer, and a fourth one struck the passenger in the spine that was right next to Billy Dean Anderson, because he was swinging around as they tried to flank him in the car. The shots that were returned Turned, one went through his ear, one grazed his head, one got him in the stomach. Now, if you were to believe Billy Dean Anderson and some of the local rumors at the time, they pulled him over and he went to go and talk with the police while he got flanked and they shot into the car and tried getting him in the head twice. Then they got him in the gut and tried to kill his friend. Now, of course, he was sentenced to a good number of years in prison, 10 years in fact, and he pretty much reformed. He stayed away from the bottle and he was released early because he was a model prisoner. He had started painting and he learned new hobbies. But as soon as he was released again, he went down one of those dark rabbit holes and found himself in the bottom of a bottle. And as soon as he was out of prison, they banished him from Tennessee as well. So it was a dark and vicious cycle from Eastern Tennessee to Indiana, where he would leave a trail of violence and quite a few upset people in his wake. The reason why I find the narrative of that last shootout so difficult to believe is that the sheriff of Fentress County at the time, a man named Irvin Jones, literally told reporters that the state troopers recognized him. Specifically, he said it was Steve Webb, who was 28 years old, who saw Billy Anderson's face. Now, recognizing Billy Anderson, you wouldn't be looking at every face you pass by unless you're driving along the road that his house is on. And then they said he recognized him as being wanted by the FBI for robbery out of state. And this, this totally changes the narrative because later it would turn into, we pulled him over to the side of the road, just seeing he was driving erratically and he began to shoot at us. The initial narrative was, we saw he was wanted by the FBI, we tried apprehending him. There's just a whole number of variables and the story doesn't really line up to the neat and tidy narrative that it became when the FBI was hounding him in the 1970s here. In any case, after that shootout with the two officers, he went to jail for years and emerged as a model prisoner, but he was banished from both Indiana and Tennessee. But all his friends were in Pall Mall and Muncie, two very small towns, and he wasn't about to uproot his entire life. And under cover of darkness, he would head to those towns and try to 
sort of renew old friendships. But every time the police would see him, because it was a small town and everybody knew everybody else, it seems like all the cops had a chip on their shoulder and things would escalate very, very quickly. And naturally, Billy felt that everybody was out to get him and only violence followed. In October 1973, Billy Dean Anderson and an accomplice robbed a bank in Indiana, and naturally he went on the run, busting through a roadblock. So police began to anticipate that he would react violently if they ever apprehended him. And he hid out in the local community, and the sheriff, a man named Junior Hatfield, eventually responded to a burglary that was taking place at a honky-tonk just a little bit north of town. And he claims that when he showed up, he saw Billy Dean Anderson trying to pick the lock in the rear, and immediately he tried to run away. But Billy Dean blew a hole through his jacket and busted all the bones out of his arm, totally just almost nearly blew his arm off. So the sheriff got into his truck with a number of bullet holes in it because Billy Dean was firing at him as he drove off. He made it to a local gas station and passed out. Billy Dean was taken into the Morgan County or Moreland County Jail, but because he had a reputation of escaping, actually managed to escape by cutting a hole through a half-inch steel plate wall, and he was again on the loose. In fact, uh, Junior Hatfield, who's buried here, was interviewed by the paper after Billy Anderson was killed at his mom's house, and he showed off the hole in his arm that was still there years later. Now, because the sheriff, Junior Hatfield, had revealed to the papers that Billy Dean shot him almost in cold blood as he ran away, Billy Dean Anderson became known as a cop killer and was placed at the top of the FBI's 10 Most Wanted. And they combed the entire country for him, from Canada down to Mexico. And eventually, the law caught up with him. But in the meantime, the local community wanted nothing more than to help him because people here felt that they were poor and that the law was kind of infringing on their daily lives, especially because many people were still involved with moonshine. So Billy Dean Anderson actually got a lot of help from moonshiners and just from local people in the community. And his controversial death in 1979 really set off a lot of alarms in Pall Mall, Tennessee. For the next five years, law enforcement combed Fentress County. There were helicopters in the sky and agents walked in plain clothes around asking anybody who would say anything, but nobody would tell them where Billy Dean was because he represented the last of the Wild West and there was a lot of apprehension to local law enforcement, especially when a huge number of people were still engaged in the moonshine trade. The law enforcement were viewed as the bad guys in this case, and although Billy Dean wasn't a saint, they didn't believe that a lot of what he was accused of he'd actually done. However, by July of 1979, an informant told the FBI that he came into town very often to the home of his mother, Ina Hughes. He would get supplies there and bring them back to a cave. Now, this cave is sort of a well-guarded secret, exactly where it is, but I've seen a man online say that it's on his property, and it's a 20-foot drop with rope, and there's still a number of canned food tins. He would bring this money back from Ina's house, or this food back from Ina's house, and take it into the cave with him and kind of live quietly. Now, because he was at the house that day, the FBI surrounded it, and he came out, and supposedly he reached for a gun and was shot. But this happened right off of Highway 127, in broad view of the main street that ran through the county, and a lot of locals reported that he was unarmed, he was shot in the back as he walked down her front steps, and thus ends the life of the preacher who went astray, Billy Dean Anderson. In tiny creeks like this, literally a stone's throw away from where he went to school at the Rotten Fork Elementary, are perfect for moonshining. Nice, cool mountain stream water and good seclusion from prying eyes. They run between the hills, and you can easily navigate these, almost like they were highways, to sell moonshine. 